Hey everybody, welcome back. Can't believe we're at 14 wins in a row, and, and they've not all been cakewalks. We got a mid character here, maybe a Judas. Judas always a little spicy, but you know, I, I would say the juice is worth the squeeze. The Judas is worth the squeeze. ZJQF TK1V. What's a ZJ? If you gotta ask, you can't afford it. I don't know. Just like the how how far away are we from the singularity where every single comment in an Isaac episode is just an inside joke or a reference to another media property? We're already probably at like 10 percent. And you might be saying it's higher, but I disagree. I disagree. Adam Sandler voice. I'll work on pumping those numbers up. Might be getting close. Baby's still here. Everybody say hi to the baby. Hello, baby. She's just chilling. Pretty, pretty like, low-key week, I think, um, coming up in the baby world. Kate has, uh, and, and I don't know the science of this, but I will say that it, it has borne out in the anecdotal data. Um, <clears throat> Kate has, on, on this, like, calendar we have, she has written down some weeks coming up as what are called Wonder Weeks, which I, I guess is, like, baby development parlance for, like, you can probably expect your baby to be a little bit more high-maintenance, but also make progress towards major milestones during this period. And, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, last week, week and a half have been... High maintenance baby. I don't. I don't blame you know the baby. I'm pretty sure all babies are high maintenance to some extent. Even if you meet someone and they're like, "Oh, I got a good baby," like, I mean, even that's just kind of a weird thing to say. You know, you're not like a bad baby for crying a lot. You know, you just. You, I mean, you you don't have control over your own impulses. It's uh, you know, is it? It's like is is nickel a bad element because of its uh, the fact that it's not pliable? I don't know. Like that. Doesn't seem very fair to nickel to me. It's just an uh, arbitrary arrangement of protons and electrons, right? Um, now, you know, if she's 16 and she's crying every day, well, we'll probably take her to talk to somebody. I'm not going to say it's a bad kid. It's more like, you know, <laughs> should make sure everything's going okay there. All right, this was an insanely great experimental treatment minus the speed downgrade, but honestly, we, we take the good with the bad on that one. Um, and I think we're, we're really looking for, like, an early arcade with this Ace of Hearts could, could move the world for us. Um, but yeah, the, the last week and a half or so, you know, she's been... Kate showed me a graph of, like, her, uh, like, the baby's eating and the baby's sleeping and the baby's diaper changes. And, like, eating frequency and volume through the roof. Um, sleeping, her sleep has been... About the same, but Kate's sleep has been like, you know, 60% of what it is during the previous weeks. And then, you know, like diaper changes is like once an hour. So, she, she's had a... it's been a, a long uh, week and a bit. And, and I mean, there's there's some like trickle-down babynomics there for me as well, you know, because like, I'm handling the baby not, not nearly as much. But um, still, when I handle the baby, I've been like, man, she's like... Hungry a lot, and she's really like crapping her pants constantly, which is believe it or not I mean you should believe it I suppose, but it's a good sign in fact I mean it's a great sign, you know There's a reason you know if, if you talk to like a fully grown adult human And you were like, you know, would you eat today? And they were like, oh, I just had like a pint of milk and that's it You'd be like what? You're like 175 pounds. How'd you how'd you get to be 175 pounds when you you're drinking a pint of milk a day. You're like, I don't know. That's just, <laughs> that's just what I get, you know. You'd, you'd be weirded out, and I think you'd be justifiably weirded out. You gotta, you gotta bridge the gap between, you know, drinking just a little bit of milk and then getting to where I am today, which is that a, a five-piece chicken strips meal is not enough. It takes a while to get there. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna try to spend as much money as necessary to look for a bomb here. We may not get one, but if we do get one, or, or a key, and I, ah, man, this is a very dangerous time to take a pill. If it's a health down, you, you're basically leaving the whole streak on the line. Okay, um, well, we'll see what we get, because we, we really don't want to, uh, well, I mean, we went to our item room, but we don't want to miss out on... Excuse me? 
Really? That fire that I shot just had that? That's amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna... I know how this sounds, okay? We're not gonna take that... No, we have to take it. Why wouldn't we take it? Well, I thought like, oh, but we'll lose it if we go to the curse room later, which I want to do. But it's this is less to preserve the deal with the devil and much more um, to be able to take a great too hard deal with the devil if it shows up and we don't get HP from our boss. All right, so now we're now we're thinking. Sometimes it doesn't even take active thought. It just requires you to not make a decision for like an extra thirty seconds, and then you know your your unconscious brain will come up with some kind of solution. So that's a great item, but it is indeed not HP. Um, and uh, it's a little hot. It's a little hot, but I think it's worth it, okay? Empty vessel, goat head. Empty vessel, if it didn't give us two spirit hearts, I probably would have said no thank you. But because it does, we're actually pretty stoked. We'll try a pill. Um, and we're, we're only trying them because, like, at this point, I feel like the, we get a disproportionate benefit from, from having maybe some consumables uh, around. But... I don't know what consumables we could get. Ew, let's go. I'm sorry. I almost woke up the baby who has now been drowsing. Drowsing? Who has now been sleeping quite quite well, actually. Um, there's, a, there's a tinted rock around here somewhere. But yeah, all this is to say that um, seems like she's kind of exiting a more, uh, a more difficult baby maintenance period, which is uh, is encouraging for sure. There it is, okay. Give me the quarter, give me the quarter. Okay. <laughs> you know, you gotta love it. In in so many ways, you gotta love it. We got uh, two tinted rocks, both of which had golden chests, and I got no keys on this floor. I used my only key to go to the item room. Um, and then also, we had an arcade, which we, you know, really endeavored to get, and then the arcade had three slot machines in it. Put 10 cents into three slot machines, got a single bomb. So, you know, you might think like, oh, he's getting carried. Look at these items. I, I disagree. I don't I don't see this as a carried situation. I see this as, uh, I see this as actually being pretty balanced. Just take me down to the next floor. How are we doing here? Doing well. Um, it is a Thursday today. And honestly, like, I, I'm... Again, somebody and Isaac, they, they roasted me good, and I'll, I'll never deny it. Like, the, the things that I get most annoyed by are the roasts that I feel like are incoherent. Like, I feel like if you have, or, or just like complete bad faith, like, like if you went around, and uh, we're starting a little petty here, I apologize, but just give me a moment to, to bring it back. Like, I, I feel like, you know, some of the, in the, in the comments, some of the ways that people take comments, um, like, they'll, they'll listen to a 40-minute video and be like, you know, this this joke that you made where you said I shouldn't say this, but it'll be funny. Please don't get mad. And then it wasn't even controversial at all. But then you're like, that was pretty messed up. And here's why. You know, I, I feel like if you applied that logic to the way that you interacted with people in real life, you would very quickly, your words per day would plummet. Let's just put it that way. Um, so th those criticisms, they don't fall on deaf ears. Some of them are genuine. Um... For sure. Like, like here's one that, and, and honestly, I think, you know, some people are going to be like, I don't really get it. Um, but I, I think it's important. Uh, I, I got roasted a little bit um, because in chess, I have kind of, uh, or had at least, defaulted to using he and his for every opponent that I came across. This is, and, and honestly, I'm not trying to pass the buck here. It's just a habit that, I, you know, I've been in since, like, I was... Uh, a little kid, right? Even in, in like, elementary school English class, it, it, in 1995 or whatever, they were like, if you don't know um, the gender of the person, you can just use he, which I think has fallen out of favor for sure. So I, I kind of grew up with, like, that mindset. And enough people were like, hey, NL, like, I know you're not trying to be malicious with it or anything like that. Um, and at the end of the day, it's not a huge deal, but it would be nice if you could start using, like, you know, they, them. And I was like, this seems perfectly appropriate. I'm, I'm probably going to mess up because, you know, I'm also focusing on the chess while I play. I'm, but, you know, I, I can certainly make an effort for that in the future. Like, that's the kind of criticism where I'm like, you know, I, I, I can work with that. And I think that criticism is levied in good faith. Um, the bad criticism is when people are like, you know, I hate when he talks about 
stocks during a pandemic. And meanwhile, you go back and like look at the comment that I made, and I'm like, I hate to talk about stocks during a pandemic, but boy, that Nasdaq, right? Okay, moving on. Like they just, to me, that strikes me as like you know, you know, you watched a 40 minute video and then you like deliberately took that one part and got mad about it. Like, forgive me, but it seems like there you just kind of want to, you're just kind of addicted to anger in my mind, but. Those don't even bother me that much. What bothers me is when somebody roasts me, but the roast is just incoherent. You know, if you're gonna insult me, at least have the decency to insult me to the core, right? Like, say something that really cuts. Don't say something that, that is just like a little baby, like, you know, velvet glove sort of insult. Like, it, when it hits me in the face, I just go, Puh, you know? You gotta, you gotta insult me with a brick. Now, I'm not encouraging you to do so, because I'll also just, you know, I mean, I would probably just mute it, but, like, you know, that's what people think, like, I get annoyed sometimes when I'm criticized. No, it's it's mostly, I mean, yeah, like, I think everybody gets annoyed to some extent when other people, you know, don't recognize that, like, oh, I'm like, oh, I'm the best content creator of all time. <laughs> In my free time, I watch my own videos. That's how entertaining they are. Um, so I'm like, one day you'll recognize the genius and you'll be ashamed of your words and your deeds. Um, but mostly it's, it's when somebody hits me with like a 1 out of 10 insult and then they think like, wow, I really got him. And I'm like, no, I just muted you because I don't like being exposed to bad comedy. I think it might rub off on me and I'm, I'm, I'm worried that that would, you know, compromise what little charm I still have available to myself. So if you can roast me good, then go ahead and roast me good. But this was all, uh, and we'll probably reroll that right there. This was all to say, we already have the ability to fly as long as we maintain where we want to be uh, HP-wise here. I actually think we'll perthrow this to try to get something a little bit more uh, advantageous. Yeah, I, I don't mind this at all, but we do want to probably go to the shop and try to buy some spirit hearts. But th this is a very, very nice damage upgrade. Somebody said, and, and they preface this by saying love the content, but they said you know you've been in lockdown for a year or more when all of the content is merely about itself and also the reaction to it. And I was like, you know what? That's like, that's not even an insult. It's it's just such a cogent and, and valid observation that it's insulting. <laughs> so I, you got me good with that one because I was like, you're not wrong. I was like, why am I talking so much about Inside Baseball? Well, yeah, it's partly because the schedule changed. It's also because, uh, and, and there's a lot of feedback on it as a result, but then it's also because of the fact that, like, man, I can't go outside, like, at all. Like, wh what, was the, what was the highlight anecdotally of, of my trip outside yesterday? Um, well, like, or of my day at all yesterday, I should say. Um, I, for the first time, I took the baby uh, by myself in her stroller and uh, Kate needed to send some things out of the post office but she was streaming so I was like I'll do it because I'm like desperate to you know get any kind of uh, natural vitamin D at this point um, so you know I, I put the baby in her winter coat and uh, put her in the stroller and wheeled her around and then I was like "Ooh, I'm having such a fun time waiting in line at the post office maybe I'll wait in line at the grocery store after this which I did thank you very much I thank you and, uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't proud of myself, but I was, I mean, it, I guess, I, I mean, I wasn't not proud of myself. I was, I, but, I, you know, it's not like it's a, a mammoth achievement or something like that, but, I, you know, I think it's, uh, it's, it's progress, at least, you know. Previously, I've been kind of, you know, let's say, not over-reliant, but really relying on Kate to do some of the baby stuff. Um, and I'm not even just talking about, like, the feeding. I mean, like... I just feel like I'm not good at putting the baby into her winter coat. <laughs> and, and like, because it's, it's a little complicated. It's like, a, it's like um, you know, a little organic origami because she's, like, the sleeves are twice as long as her arm. And then, like, she always tries to eat her hand. So she'll, like, you put her arm in the sleeve and then she folds her arm inside of the sleeve. And then you try to grab it to pull it out. But she gets, like, really tense and you're like, I don't want to you know, hyper-extend her arm or something like that. And then her arm goes, like, completely limp. And you're like, no, I need, like, a little tension in order to get it through the aperture at the end of this. Um, but, you know, it, only by it, doing it more often can you can you get it done. And then also there's the, and I don't know if, like, any other parents out there can relate to this, but, like, you know what? Let's have some fun with this one. Let, let's take a risk. Because uh, Kate has handled so much of the baby stuff, 
Like, it's, it's easier to let her handle more in the future, which I think is kind of a bad habit for me. You know, she made up the diaper bag, which is like a backpack that we take out with us. You know, if we ever have to take the baby to a doctor's appointment or like we both have to go to the dentist. So we, you know, uh, take the diaper bag with us. It's got diapers and wet wipes and cloths and pacifiers and, uh, you know, bottles and bottle sterilizers and stuff like that. But because she packed the bag, she knows what's in it. So I'm always like, oh, well, I'm not going to handle the diaper bag stuff. You've already got that on lock. But then the problem just keeps getting more and more complex, right? Because the diaper bag... Yeah, why not? This is a good item for us. Um, the diaper bag grows and grows as the baby's needs grow and grow. And now it's like... Um, like the diaper bag is... It's like Green Lantern's ring. Like, whatever you need is in there. But you got to know how to summon it. Um... I'm trying to get out of the habit of just be like, even, and it's rough, right? Especially because like if there's, you know, if you're if both parents are there, um, and you know, usually with a baby, you're like you're in a rush <laughs> quite frequently. Uh, very very rarely are you like ah, we've got the baby out and we got a lot of free time and it's very relaxing, right? Um, you know, you, I think you got to have a good sense of humor about it because there's going to be times where you're just like a little exasperated. Um, I do think we have a well-behaved baby, though. Um, like, wh whenever we happen to be outside, she usually, like, has a stiff upper lip, and then she just punishes us when we get home. Which I think is that's the ideal, right? You know, you'd, you'd rather have your kid be upset at home than, you know... I was gonna say at the Lamborghini dealership, but I think that, that joke's getting a little tired. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, so, you know, there, there's a tendency, like, because this person is so good at this thing, um, you know, when we're in a rush, I'm going to let her do it. But then you, you're always in a rush, so you, like, never develop the skill. I think there's there's something to be said for, like, you know, playing to your strengths, you know, is important. But I also think it can be important to, to shore up your weaknesses, which I guess is, like, a non-controversial statement. But it's important to remember that, I mean, like, I, I'm not a, a developmental psychologist, right? case that's not clear from some of the nonsense I've said uh, over the years, but I feel like your strengths are not necessarily your strengths, uh, like, in terms of habit, at least, from, like, a genetic uh, perspective. Like, I don't really think that I was born disorganized, right? I feel like when I was a kid, um, I got in the habit somehow of rushing things. And, and honestly, I think one of the reasons that I rushed things as a kid is because well, now this is where you can be genuinely mad in the comments. But I, I think because my, my parents read to me a lot, the early phases of school were, like, very, very easy. Like, I, I went in with kind of, like, a built-in advantage. Not not saying that I'm, you know, more intelligent than the average person. Merely that, you know, my, my parents, I, I really think they did a great job. Like, like, reading is such a base, fundamental skill. Like, you need to be able to... The, the strength and, and aptitude that you have for reading, I really feel, determines almost the rate at which you learn in those first few years of school. Because you're not struggling. Like, you can just digest the material. You don't have to learn how to digest the material in the first place. Um, so I, I think, like, as a result of that, you know, and, and the fact that the curriculum was tailored towards uh, the mean, um, you know, I was able to rush stuff out and still do well on it scholastically, despite putting in a, a, a fairly low amount of effort. Um, and as a result, I kind of got in the habit of like, hey, let's let's just accomplish this task as quickly as possible to a, a certain minimum level of satisfaction, and, uh, and it'll work. I also think, you know, um, my, my mom was very organized. As when I was a child, which you, you need, you know, you're not going to be, you could go to the five-year-old and be like, honey, do you have a dentist appointment this weekend? You know, you're going to, the parents have to take care of it. But because she was so organized, I think that I never really had the, uh, I never really had to fend for myself in that avenue and, and develop that skill early. So I just kind of shied away from it as much as possible. And then we tell ourselves things like, you know, like if you're not good at public speaking, you, you might... On one hand, you, you probably harbor the belief that, like, you know, oh, if I practice it, I could get better at it. But at the same time, maybe you have a certain level of cognitive dissonance about this. But, like, oh, I just, like, wasn't born being good at public speaking or whatever, right? I, I think that we can tell ourselves kind of like a, a comforting lie to to explain why we have a, a weakness in a specific area. And obviously, like, there's some, 
take on you know this. developmental or genetic component to some skills for sure like i i probably don't have the uh the leg morphology to become like a world-class sprinter I'm I'm not really tall enough and there have been exceptions but I'm uh, you know I'm not really tall enough to find it likely to become a world-class basketball player I think uh, but I think that you know when it comes to stuff like that are generally good habits like like being neat and tidy and stuff like that I think it's more like you know you, you just gotta get in the habit of it and, and it's a lifelong process you know if you, if you get into it with the mindset of like Oh, I'm gonna like practice being tidy and then in like th Two years, I'm just gonna be clean forever and I'll never have to work about it I, Or work on it. I don't think that's how it works. I think you just Like a lot of things in life I think are just constantly saying that you're gonna make an improvement in something forever and then eventually just dying I, <laughs> That might sound oh that for some reason. I thought that was my creep despite never being over there um I know that kind of sounds uh, maybe depressing, but I don't know. I, I feel like it's, you know, I mean, if you if you could reach perfection in life so easily, like I don't know, wouldn't you <laughs> just be like I'm done? Like if you if you could become perfect in all skills in like a year, wouldn't you just be like you're kind of bored? I don't know. Maybe maybe not. Maybe it would own. Kind of sounds like it would own. I haven't really thought it through that much, but. Regardless. Anyway, I don't know how we got off on this tangent. Basically, okay, so the way that the tangent worked is like, you know, Kate's better at the baby stuff. She's better at the organizational element. I've used that as a crutch to be like, well, I don't, you don't even want me to do it because it'll take me twice as long. Um, but I think that that's, you know, again, a comforting lie that I tell myself to uh, not have to deal with my own weaknesses in that avenue. And, and maybe there's some applicability to that in, in other areas of my own life and maybe in some generalized areas of your life as well. That's... That's all I'm trying to say. You, you could just give me an HP upgrade. You know, you don't have to... You don't have to be so coy about it. But anyway, yeah, tomorrow is Friday. Yesterday was Thursday. Thursday. Today, it is Friday. Friday. Oh, the baby did not like that. How about this one? We, we, we. We so excited. We so excited. We're gonna have fun today. Tomorrow is Saturday. Sunday comes afterwards. I don't want this story to end. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm trying to... I'm trying to delete it. Well, I'm not trying to delete it. I'm trying to finish the the run here. And, and like, it is very finishable, quite frankly. And, and I'm not just trying to speed through this one, but... You know, I, I'm not going to go back for that judgment. The judgment, honestly, disrespected me greatly by not paying out in, like, 12, 15 cents, somewhere in that range. So, you know what? Screw you, buddy. I'm not afraid to say it. Screw you. I'm the bad boy of YouTube. Absolutely, we'll take this. Okay, I mean, now that I think about it, I'm like, we, we should probably try to keep Empty Vessel rolling because the invincibility is so useful. So, as much as this is like, oh, but we're getting, because of Maggie's faith, we're getting, um, one HP per floor, but then we can give it up every floor as well, but, okay. I think at some point, like, I think if we, and again, why don't we just take the time to consciously figure this out. If we want to eventually finish this run with Empty Vessel being active, by the way, we probably should have taken Spirit of the Night now that I think about it. I thought I was so clever by not doing it, but... Um, that would have avoided this problem altogether, but I think if we, um, well, actually, you know what, hold on, hold on, check this out, okay, so this is not the optimum way to do this, okay, and it doesn't even work because of the way our HP is currently structured, um, I thought that would take our eternal heart away, and then we could use Joker to just take a random deal with the devil and be in permanent, uh, invincibility, or... You know, an attempted permanent invincibility, at least, but... Anyway, we, we, don't need, we don't need to sweat it too much. I think if we drop Maggie's Faith on the next floor, then we'll, in all likelihood, have one... We'll be able to set it up so that we have one HP, um, red heart-wise, on the Cathedral. And then we can use our Joker card on the Cathedral, which we is good for us because we wouldn't get a deal with the Devil on the Cathedral regardless, unless we got a red chest. Um... 
Uh, sorry, I'm being very flippant with the consumables as well. I apologize. I'm, I'm not using every part of the buffalo here. All I'm going to say, though, is if, if you have ever said my man is leaving his uh, all these keys behind and it makes me want to stop watching the videos, all I'm saying is if you've ever said that, but you don't eat the crust of your pizza, we need to have words. You know, it bothers me when people don't eat the crust of their pizza. But I don't like them. Yeah, and, and I don't think I'm, I'm really going to need more than 17 keys for the rest of this run. Oh, but what if you do? Yeah, and what if you end up being hungry way earlier? As a result of the fact that you don't eat your pizza crust. You eat six slices of pizza through the crust away. The crusts are the equivalent of probably like a slice and a half at that point. Well, then I'll just eat more food. Well, then I'll just get more keys. Okay, Susan? Then I'll just get more keys. It's not that big of a deal. We'll, we'll, all, we'll all get through this together, all right? If you all start eating the crusts, I'll start picking up the keys that I don't need either. That's going to be my argument for everything now. I don't know. It's... We're, we're going to enter a new fallacy into the rhetorical lexicography. I don't know if that's how that word works. <laughs> it's the pizza fallacy, the idea that you can never take criticism from somebody who doesn't eat their pizza crust. I don't know, though, man. I kind of... The slippery slice fallacy. I said this before, but like... Uh, I went to a, an event one time. Names have been changed to protect the innocent. Um, you know what? I think we'll do better with that, honestly. Um, but I, I went to an event one time where there was a lot of pizza. This is a very common shared food at an event like this. Um, and it was it was professional adults. You know, it was not like it wasn't high school, it wasn't middle school. These these were adults who, um, you know, had good jobs. Um, and they weren't eating the crust of the pizza, which is actually totally fine. You know, for all the bluster that I do in these videos, I'm not going to go up to, you know, like a 45-year-old person in public and be like, you should really start eating your crust, you know? They, they've been down this road before. Um, but the thing that got me was that they were just throwing the crust in the open part of the pizza box. So, you know, like when you open the pizza box, there's the, there's the part that the pizza's in and then there's the lid. They were just throwing their empty crust in the lid like somebody was going to actually come by and eat them. And it's like, it's like, can you just throw it in the compost or something? Like, it's, it's not that gross, but like your mouths, like, like 20 different mouths have been on these, the edges of these crusts. And you're just leaving them like right next to the food that, that is, you know, been unblemished. Like, it's just, it's just a little weird to me. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's not quite the same, but it's like, you know, if somebody like chewed up. Uh, like, sometimes you'll bite into a piece of meat and there's, like, too much gristle, so you chew on it for a bit and then you have to, like, surreptitiously spit it out into a napkin or something like that. It's like if they did that, but they just spit it out, like, onto your plate. And they're like, well, it's not touching your food. Yeah, but it's kind of like, it's... It's kind of looking like it wants to, you know? Anyway, I'm not, like... It didn't, it didn't ruin my appetite. In fact, if anything, it kind of stoked it a little bit. I was... Honestly, tempted to eat some of the crust, but I didn't. This was also, I mean, obviously, this is pre-COVID. I haven't been to too many, uh, you know, mixers lately. I think if that, maybe, if, if COVID at least gets those people to throw out their crust individually instead of leaving them in the top of the box, then I'm not going to say it was worth it because it's obviously just extremely false, but... One of, one of a very small silver lining, perhaps, is that I won't be as annoyed in this one hyper-specific situation that's literally happened to me one time in my entire life. And uh, isn't that what it's all about? Okay, our final natural deal with the devil. Who, baby. Um, that's mighty nice for certain. Uh, and then this is the, the end of our master plan here. We'd really like to get something that gives us defense or survivability. Abaddon, respawns, etc., etc. Book of the Dead, you know. Well, again, you want to make, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans? Okay, uh, I'd like to get out of here, please. Okay, we almost got hit again. Would have been pretty bad. And, and... 
even this is not great and I, I'm just just relax is I guess step one step one of this whole plan here is just chill out we got great damage got a lot of flies coming I I genuinely though you may disagree with me here um, I genuinely think we could win this run as is with no extra HP for the remainder I, I think we could win the main thing motivating me there is that I don't think I can bring myself to lose after being so flippant about not needing every consumable in the game. It would just be it would be bad etiquette of me to to be owned so thoroughly. And as a result, I, I don't want to allow that to happen. So if we could just get maybe I was just gonna say, if even one of these pays out with a spirit heart but two did, then I'll be uh, I'll be over the moon. And you know what? I should check. <laughs> I've had a Discord ping for a minute here. Just let me check it out. Because I'm supposed to be doing a stream, but it's not supposed to start right away. Oh, oh, it's from it's actually from my wife, which means it's way more urgent. She's still asleep. But I will bring her up in like ten minutes when this run is over. And then smiley. There you go. <clears throat> I was hoping, because, you know, I'm doing that video, or the, the stream with Ross Boomsocks, who's from Scotland. So I was I thought maybe we had a time zone thing where he was like, oh, are we, like, supposed to start now? And I'm like, no, nah, it's an hour from now. And he'd be like, what? And I'd be like, I know, dude, we live on, like, a spherical Earth. It's weird. I've, I've been over this. Haven't you watched the Isaac episodes? I've, I've talked about it, I don't know, pretty much Help. Every eighth episode for I think like my entire existence. Well, I will say thank the Lord that we uh, we got two spirit hearts back there. Because I just you know I got I got distracted by the banter and I just walked into a random random foe. And I'm not talking about a, a noodle soup. So we're paying for our earlier flippantness without a doubt. Um, I still very much believe... I mean, this is kind of like my ideal run, right? Like this glass cannon sort of setup. I like it a lot, to be honest with you. We'll probably also, like if I had to guess, we'll probably go down to one hit kill at some point. It's just science. I'm just I'm just playing the, the smart money there. And if we do, all we're going to do is, you know, keep ice in the veins. Just keep some ice in the veins. I am trying to figure out, because like I, I thought we were so confident and comfortable on this one. I'm like, where did it go wrong? It's a question I ask myself <laughs> quite frequently. Don't think we really want more pills. And then just... Okay. That room honestly scares me more than Isaac, which is probably a good indication that I don't really know what I'm talking about. These guys have got to go. And then they gotta come back. And then they gotta go. Okay, perfect, perfect. Now as much as I... Now that I think about it, we're like... We didn't even make Empty Vessel work. I mean, I understand why we didn't want Book of the Dead, but I have to feel like the invincibility from Empty Vessel probably would have been pretty sick. I feel like we've... The, a lot of the badness that I'm experiencing on this run can essentially just be boiled down to you didn't respect uh, this item when you should have. Like, we, we didn't give enough respect to Empty Vessel. We basically treated it as, like, a two-spirit heart only deal. Like, we got, or we got two demon hearts out of it, and that's it. So I did take the virus. The virus is kind of like, you know, it's a Hail Mary. We, we take a definite speed penalty, which is pretty bad. Um, but if we get hit on a room with a lot of enemies, we can just walk into them. Okay, uh, I have honestly no idea why we didn't take damage there. Uh, but I'm, I'm very thankful. Or maybe we did take damage, I don't know. I just wasn't paying. Like, we don't have Pyromaniac. We don't have Infamy. I... People told me, like, previously I had a situation like that where it looked like I would, I was going to take damage and I didn't. And people were like, Hallowed Poop gives you a chance to not take damage. So that's what happened on that one. But we do not have Hallowed Poop here. So 
you know, we're, we're still <laughs> learning a little bit, uh, day in and day out, I guess. Strength card, very, very nice. But a, a pretty tense run to the end, for sure. Pretty tense run to the end. Uh, no, 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 no. Flies, work with me. Work with me on this one, flies. We really want to kill. Uh, like, greed first will be pretty pog. Okay, I'm sorry, Gluttony. I, I really tried. I, I wanted that HP. But I did also hit you with two blasts to the face. Like, as soon as the run started. As soon as the room started. Um, so, I, I guess I, I'd have to tell you that I do think that it's my fault that you died first. Alright, one side of the floor cleared out. The next side of the floor still to come. Like I said, I, I, I really I felt like there was a good chance we could make it through this run with the HP we had back there. Um, now, there are a couple of rooms that basically you just gotta hold your breath on. Double cage, double adversary. Cup of Grey, Cup of Goose, Cup of Chris. With, with a half a milli on my wrist, on my wrist. <laughs> Take the liquor straight, never chase that. Drop top like we bring an 88 back. Uh, basically what I'm trying to say is, I'm so fancy, you already know. We get a- we did! Thank God! I, I, I really went for it. We didn't have permanent Polaroid invincibility. Because we have one red heart because I'm a fool. Um, Especially because Book of the Dead might actually just be better than Guppy's Head to begin with. So, like, I'm, I really need to win this run to redeem myself for, for that. But, um... I, I think I've made a lot of uh, bad decisions on this run. On the other hand, how bad could they be if we're gonna... If we're gonna reach greatness here. One of these guys has gotta go. NL, why do you know all the lyrics to Iggy Azalea's Fancy? Okay, first things first. I'm the realist, but first things first, it's a bop. I do not think Iggy Azalea's a good rapper, but that song has a, an incredible hook. I don't think Shaggy's a good rapper either. Everybody was bumping Wasn't Me in 2001. No offense, Shaggy. But you lost all your credibility for me when you started doing those reggae albums with Sting. I, I said, we haven't forgotten. People don't forget. Secondly, I don't know all the lyrics. I only know like 70% of the first verse and then like, I don't really know the, the second verse. Except when she goes, I'll be I-G-G-Y with my name in gold. I'll be looking at the something with some something to throw. Anyway, we did it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I am live 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. Twitch.tv slash Northern Lion every day except Saturday. Come watch Twitch.tv slash Northern Lion. Maybe I'm not live right now. Just click the follow button. Apart from that, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And, and your cue, baby. She just smiled. She's got no words. See you next time.